In 1941, the Japanese were becoming more of a threat to the British and American empires in Southeast Asia. One of their famous slogans was, Asia for the Asians. It's safe to say they weren't exactly fans of the Western powers having empires in Southeast Asia. On December 2nd, 1941, two large battleships arrived in Singapore, HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Repulse. Prince of Wales was one of only a handful of its size in the British Navy. They arrived to mass fanfare as the Singaporeans now felt much safer against the Japanese advance. The man in charge of these ships was Admiral Phillips. Under his command were Captain Leach of the Prince of Wales and Captain Tennant of Repulse. On the 4th of December, Phillips flew over to Manila to meet with American General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Hart. He needed to convince Hart to send eight American destroyers to help protect Singapore. I believe he also knew that this would implicate American lives in any attack on Singapore, which might force the US to join the war. On the 6th, an American officer interrupts their meeting to break important news. A convoy of Japanese ships has been spotted near Malaya. Hart agrees to send four destroyers, which sailed to Singapore at once. Repulse, which had sailed down to Darwin on the 5th, was immediately recalled back to Singapore, and Phillips left in a hurry and arrived back in Singapore early on the morning of the 7th of December. The 8th of December, a day that will live in infamy. The Japanese launch a large-scale coordinated attack across the Pacific. At 0025 hours, they land in Kotabaru, northern Malaya. At 0155 hours, they attack Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. They also attack the Philippines, Guam, Wake Island, the Gilbert Islands, Hong Kong, and Thailand. At 0400 hours, they fly over Singapore. The sky is clear, and the 17 Japanese bombers are spotted easily. However, the British had not practiced any air defense of Singapore. The searchlights and anti-air gunners were not coordinated, and not one hit was sustained by any Japanese aircraft. The blackout for the city did not function, which led to many bombs being dropped directly over residents of Singapore. I can remember quite clearly various areas of the dockyard blacking out whilst others remained fully lit. As one area was blacked out, so another would be switched on, and this continued for a considerable time, during which people were forever running hither and thither, presumably looking for some sort of shelter. 200 people were killed or wounded in this attack. By midday, the Admiralty in Britain were aware of the attack and asked Phillips what his plan of action was. At 12.30, Phillips held a meeting aboard Prince of Wales, where he announced the HMS Prince of Wales, Repulse, Express, Electra, Tenedos, and the Australian ship HMAS Vampire would sail for Northern Siam or Thailand to catch the Japanese by surprise that evening. The captains of Vampire and Tenedos were surprised that their World War I ships were even considered for such serious action. On the afternoon of the 9th of December, three Japanese planes were spotted in the distance. The element of surprise had been lost. During the night, a flare was spotted rising above the ocean. Admiral Phillips made the decision to turn back, not knowing how many Japanese ships could be just a few miles away and knowing that Britain's navy was thin in this area. He was then made aware of an attack in Kwantan, which was en route back to Singapore. So he diverted course to investigate. December 10th, 0600 hours. The ships arrive at Kwantan, but there are no Japanese in sight. The reports had been false. At 10.20, a Japanese aircraft is spotted shadowing the fleet. 
At 10.45, rumblings of a far-off aircraft are picked up by the radar. The men are called to their battle stations. 1100 hours, eight Japanese aircraft are spotted approaching at 10,000 feet. At 11.13, the Japanese heavy bombers and torpedo bombers attack. Repulse sustains a direct hit, but the bomb does not explode. Her walrus seaplane is knocked into the ocean. Oil leaks onto the deck and multiple fires are started. Some of the stokers had managed to climb up through the uptakes or ventilation system and were screaming for us to let them out. Twelve of us ripped the wire away and helped those poor fellows out. It was only then did we realise they were naked and all badly burnt and screaming in agony. At 11.38, the torpedo bombers loop back around and are sighted approaching Prince of Wales. At 11.44, the Prince of Wales sustains two torpedo hits, which damage her propeller shaft, causing steering to fail. The entire ship vibrates for 30 seconds, her speed drops to 10 knots, and she has a list of port of 10 degrees. Many of her anti-air guns are now without power. At 1200 hours, the planes leave, and there is a lull for 20 minutes. At 12.10, the Prince of Wales hoists the out-of-control flag. At 12.20, Prince of Wales spots a large formation of aircraft approaching to the east. The planes split into three groups, although it appears as if there were only two. The first group heads for Prince of Wales, although some turn away at the last minute to attack Repulse. Only two of the starboard side anti-air guns were working and the ship was hit by four torpedoes which caused it to jump sideways. The fuel tank was ruptured. 18,000 tonnes of water and diesel flood into the ship. The propeller shaft was bent inwards, causing the turbines in three of the four engine rooms to stop working. Only two of the eight dynamos were now powering the entire ship. This happened in five minutes. Repulse is attacked from all sides. It's impossible for her to avoid being hit, although Captain Tennant manages to avoid eight torpedoes through clever manoeuvring. Only one hit was sustained. The damage was controlled by counter-flooding on the other side. At 12.23, the third formation attacked Repulse. Six attacked the starboard side, and three attacked the port side. Two planes flew directly over her, and they were both shot down. All three torpedoes from her port side hit, and one from the starboard side hit. The rudder is jammed, and she begins to list 7, 9, and then 12 degrees to port. At 12.27, Captain Tennant comes over the speakers. All hands on deck, prepare to abandon ship. God be with you. The crew ran up the sloping deck and had to slide down the hull of the ship as she keeled over. Those who ran down the deck were crushed by the superstructure, or pulled underwater by the suction created by the sinking ship. Many of those down in the bowels of the ship didn't hear the call for abandoned ship, and had to figure it out by themselves. 16-year-old boy seaman Hayden had to make a dramatic escape. The fact that I was a messenger had taught me all the shortcuts around the ship and I scrambled up an escape pipe wide enough to take only one person at a time. The door was above me, at about 45 degrees. The only way I could reach up to it was to recruit the aid of the one below me to give me a push. Unfortunately, having done so, he lost his footing and fell back, taking another dozen with him. Within 11 minutes of the first torpedo hit, Repulse had sunk. Electra and Vampire came to pick up the survivors. At 12.41, eight more heavy bombers were spotted by Prince of Wales. They flew over at 9,000 feet, dropping their 500 kilogram bombs. One hit the port side and pierced the deck. It exploded in the armor deck, which caused the cinema flat to be crushed. The cinema flat was being used to house the wounded. 200 to 300 men were in there. HMS Express came alongside to take on the wounded. Those deemed unnecessary were also allowed to move to Express. 
Some used gangplanks, some jumped, and some swung across on ropes. As the list increased, Express had to leave in case the hull of Prince of Wales came up underneath her. At 13.15, Captain Leach ordered to abandon ship. At 13.18, Electra sent a signal to Singapore. Prince of Wales sunk. At 13.23, the Prince of Wales keeled over. At 1600 hours, the final survivor was picked up by Electra. 2,081 men were rescued, including Captain Tennant. Captain Leach and Admiral Phillips went down with their ship. The doctors aboard the other ships were overwhelmed by patients, most of whom could not be saved and were only given morphine. The whole deck was covered with exhausted men. It was difficult to recognise anybody because of all the oil. It took only 99 minutes from the first hit at 11.44 for Britain's naval defence in the Pacific to be destroyed. At no point did any ship in the convoy request air support from Singapore. No damage was done to the Japanese Navy. The Japanese Air Force was barely scratched. The survivors were to be taken back to Singapore to heal up. For them, the journey ahead will be tough. Without the capital ships, the defence of Singapore and Malaya would become much more difficult.